A few weeks went by. By now, Flay was in her second trimester, and Kenjo had been diligently focused on his schoolwork. He still studied the artifacts he found in his spare time. While he pored over his homework, he thought to himself about how much had changed, how much he had changed. When he met Filet, he never could have imagined that he would ever want to be a family man. He was happy, philandering around, loving and leaving. And now his heart was purely in Filet's hands. And he knew that if he were ever to hurt her, his life as he knew it would surely end. One afternoon, after he finished giving his presentation, Kenjo went to his archaeology table to work on one of those clay-covered artifacts when suddenly his phone dinged. The ding meant that he got a new email. His heart started to race. He put down his tools and picked up his phone. After he took a deep breath, he unlocked it and went straight to his email app to open the new message. It was from His Majesty, Kengo Fish, ruler of Solani, and it read, Unto Kenjo Yamaguchi Ofish, consort of Princess Phileo Fish, His Majesty King Ofish of Sulani, responds with greetings and goodwill. I wish to thank you for writing to me to inform me about my daughter. You can tell her that I have received each and every one of her letters, but I have chosen not to respond. The insolence and rebellion she showed in sneaking out in the middle of the night, telling no one only to go to land, make her way to Oasis Springs to talk to a humans in a bank to get things her mother left her for life amongst humans. To make her way to her mother's cabin? Then she went to university, got a cat, and married you. Those are things humans do. As a human, I was understandably upset. However, I was a fool. If I took half a moment to listen to what my daughter had been telling me all her life, and I actually heard her, maybe she would have stayed home. And even if she did leave home, and followed her mother's footsteps. We would still have been on good terms. I would have understood. It threw me for a loop. I was not ready to let my oldest daughter go. She reminds me so much of her mother. Her temperament, her creativity, her intelligence, and her sense of adventure. Having Filet with me, it was almost as if my wife never died. And I should have known that my ignorance would lead up to my daughter escaping the sea for dry land. I regret this deeply. I do not wish for any more time to go by without her in my life. To have that will also mean having you in our lives. There's no two ways around that. You writing to me shows me the kind of man you are. You are kind, loving, compassionate, and just the kind of being, regardless of species, that I would have always wanted for my daughter. I will most certainly grant you an audience with me. I want to meet you. I would like to speak to you. I would like to welcome you into the kingdom of Sulani with open fins. Then together, we'll find a most suitable home for you, Filet, and my grandchild to be. Money is no object. Please let this be a gift to both of you. Not from the kingdom, but from me, a very foolish father. It would bring me great joy to do this for you. Think of it as an apology, a wedding gift, and a gift for my grandchildren. It would bring me no greater pleasure than to do this for you both and to bring my daughter home to Sulani. Please reply to this email at your earliest convenience with information about your travel plans and let me know if I can be of any assistance. Almost regards, His Majesty King of Fish, ruler of Sulani. Once he closed the email, he immediately booked his flight for that afternoon, then told Filet he was going to Sulani to house hunt. Filet helped him pack his bags while he called for a taxi. He never told her that he wrote to His Majesty. He wanted to keep it a surprise, and he most certainly was not going to tell, not until he returns from his trip, at least. He landed in Zulani, and he was left breathless at the sheer beauty. He has seen photos his wife had. He has heard her stories. He's even looked it up online. Nothing he has seen thus far even remotely prepared him for his arrival. The people that escorted him off of the plane were so warm and friendly. They placed a lay over his head. The fragrance of the blossoms wafted upward toward his nose. He was instantly relaxed and felt at home and at peace. Every ounce of stress and worry had disappeared. He already felt at home. Now, to find a real home, he booked it to the hotel to drop off his luggage so he could immediately wander the main island and sink his feet into the sand. 
while he looked at some of the houses he saw online. He'll go to the other islands tomorrow. He was only here a few days, so he wanted to take full advantage of his time. The next morning, he woke up early. His Majesty wanted Kenjo to come to the castle to meet and discuss everything over breakfast. Kenjo speaks to the guards at the entrance to tell them that he was expected. They corroborated with each other and with His Majesty, and then approved his entry. Kenjo was escorted in and led to the receiving room to wait until it was time for His Majesty to meet with him. Suddenly, he heard the herald. His Majesty, King of Fish of Sulani. Will they find the home of their dreams? Will Filet forgive Kenjo for seeing her father in secret? Come back next time when Kenjo has a breakfast meeting with His Majesty and they find their brand new home. Thanks for watching everyone. Make sure you comment, rate, subscribe, and share, and turn on those notifications so you know when I drop my next video. May you be well, happy, and peaceful, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.